Hey guys, welcome back to Everything DIY. Today we're going to be showing you how we replace the shocks and struts on our car. This should be pretty much the same process for most vehicles out there on the road right now. So if you are interested in seeing how we do this, just keep watching. You've probably been wondering how to even tell if your shock has gone bad. A good way to see is if you have a bunch of oil residue just all over it. Like you can kind of see, obviously this one does right here. Another kind of obvious way to tell is if your car is just a little too floaty, it's not taking bumps as well as it maybe it used to, and I don't want to say isn't as comfortable, but maybe just a little too comfortable now. Um, the life expectancy for shocks is about 70,000 miles, but just don't be surprised if they do go out around 50. It kind of depends on the terrain you're driving in, how much you drive, etc. The parts we're using for this project are these KYB shocks and struts. We've had a lot of good experience with this company in the past, so that's why we're going to be using them here again today. Along with the shocks and struts, we're also going to be replacing the top patent bearings with these OEM Mazda parts. For this project, we're using a jack, a couple of ratchets and wrenches, and some spring compressors. For a full list, just see the description below. We're going to start with the front, so just lift up the car on both sides, support with jack stands, and remove the tire. The first thing I'm going to do is get this brake line out of the way, so I'm going to first this retaining clip off and then pull it down and out and away. Now I'm going to remove the unlink from the strut and some of you may need to take this off with an allen wrench but it's on there pretty tight so Now I'm going to remove the clamp bolt from the knuckle so we can start wiggling our strut out. So in order for us to start wiggling the strut out of the knuckle, we need to kind of widen the opening a bit. What Mazda suggests is to just beat the piss out of it with a hammer. We're not going to do that. We're going to start widening it from the back so it's easier to slip out. We're going to show you how we do that right now. In order to do this, I'm going to stick this washer right in there. Okay. And then I'm going to put the bolt in backwards. And what these two pieces are going to do as I tighten this is separate the knuckle. So now you can kind of see there's a bit of an opening, little gap there. Don't go too hard or you will break that knuckle right in half. So just keep going until you can see that there's some space for you to start wiggling it out. In order for us to actually wiggle the strut out of its little gap here, what we did in order to push it up and away from the brake to actually get the brake down and the strut up, we are using a piece of wood on the jack to push up on this metal piece here, which is obviously attached to the strut. So we're gonna get that up and start wiggling it out. So just keep pushing back and forth on it. It'll take some muscle, but just keep going until it starts to push out. Making some progress, I promise you'll get there. You just gotta keep doing it, keep going after it, and it'll come. Now that we have the strut pretty much out, we're gonna head up to the top of this thing under the hood and remove the three bolts that are holding it on. Okay. 
in order to get to this point, you're gonna have to just, right after you remove those bolts, keep pushing up on that shock, or a strut, sorry, and just keep going. It's gonna take a lot of muscle, but you'll get here eventually, I swear. <laughs> Now we're going to start compressing the spring so that we can take or remove the top hat. You're going to want to grab three spring compressors if you're using this type just to be safe. Let's get those situated. Okay, so you're going to want to do this slowly and start compressing it down evenly on each spring compressor. So you know that the top hat is under no more pressure when you can see a bit of space on this side or this side, meaning that you've compressed the spring enough to get stuff off safely. To remove the top hat, we have a singular nut holding it in place. Now let's pull the top hat off. The only things we're using from the old setup is the bump stop. Push that in there if we can. Yeah, and the dust cover. Before we put the spring on the new strut, we're gonna just clean off any debris from the tops and the bottom, just because I'm gonna make sure there's nothing in the way. Now we can start placing the new strut inside. Now we're just going to tighten down the top hat a bit. We're not going to get it too tight, just snug. Now we can start relieving some of the pressure on the spring. So just while you're doing that, make sure that this end here is meeting up against this end here, or else you're gonna get a bunch of noise as you're going along. That right there at the end that those two pieces, the way they look meeting there together, that's how that should look. Okay, now we can install the setup. Just make sure that this metal piece here is hitting towards the back. This is not heavy at all. <laughs> okay, now that we have it in place, we can start working the strut in, back in again. This, the knuckles spread so much like this, once you push it far enough back in toward the correct position, it'll just sort of sink right down into the hole. So before proceeding any further, you want to make sure that this strut is all the way down. And the way to tell is that the indicator should be pressing all the way up against the back of the knuckle. Now with that all the way down, we can start pushing the whole assembly upwards so we can reinstall the top three bolts. The top three bolts are now secure, but you don't want to remove the jack just yet. You want to install the knuckle bolt first. Okay, so new day, guys. Um, when I was putting this bolt in yesterday, it kind of stripped a little bit, so we had to stop for the night, and we are picking up on a new day with the new bolt. <laughs> so we just cleaned it up, and we got the new bolt in there, and we are good to go now. Now we're able to torque it down to 50 foot-pounds. With that torque down, we can now head up here to do these three as well. Um, but just make sure before you do that, or while you're doing that, to get the strut as far this way as possible, just for alignment purposes. Head 
back down again to replace the end link. And now replace the brick line. So we are all done on this side. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side on the front. We're just gonna put the tire back on over here and then I'm gonna head over to the back with you guys. So obviously we've already lifted the car and supported with jacks on both sides like we did in the front and removed the tire. We don't need to do the spring this time. We just need to get that shock out. So replacing the shocks in the back is really quite easy. I'll, we only have about one bolt holding it down here and there's two more up near the top so I'm just going to take this one out now. Now we can just remove those top ones. So we're going to reuse the old top hat, bump stop, and dust cover because they're in really good condition. So I'm just going to get this going up here to get those guys off. Now we can just put this whole thing back on over the new one. Okay, and this guy came with a new bolt. All right, with that all tightened down, we can actually just get it on up in there. New shock is in place, now we can just torque down the top two bolts. Okay, now for the lower bolt, and just a heads up, you may have to lift up on the shock a bit to get it in line. It was a little difficult for us, so just be aware. Alright guys, so we are done with this side and we're just going to get that tire back on then head on over to the other side and do the exact same thing. Hopefully this uh, the suspension is nice and tight now and uh, yeah, that's it for this video, but we will see you in our next one. If you liked this one, please thumb it. If you want to see more from us and are new, subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please leave them below and we will talk to you soon. Bye!